today we'll have the session on JVPM 6, the latest version of uh, JVPM and uh, Druze. JVPM is a BPM suite altogether. So it has got two components into it. One is a business process management and the business rules management. So the main advantage of this particular uh, BPM suite is that these two are integrated and within a single platform. All the other vendors, whoever is providing this business process management, like the rules and process engine are not integrated so well as in JVPM. So that's one main advantage here. So if you say what do we do with this business process management, we'll be able to model our uh, business process, we'll be able to execute it, run it and then we'll be able to monitor what happens throughout the life cycle of each process instance. And uh, using the business rules management, we will be able to externalize the rules from uh, any application, any Java application and uh, can also be run separately, standalone with which is integrated with a Java application or it can be as part of a business process management as well. So as part of a process as well. There can be uh, some rules integrated or within the process flow of any business process. So these are the two components, main components that we have in the JVPM. So if you see the diagram below, it is a very, very high level uh, picture of uh, this BPM suite. So we have the rule engine and the process engine. These are the two things main engines that uh, constitute this BPM suite and uh, both of them share the same Maven repository or the same knowledge uh, base. The knowledge base here is all the process diagrams that you draw using this BPM into model and uh, the rules that you write, the decision tables that you create and the Java model or the models that you create, the fact types that you create, the types that is, that is going to be used as your domain model on which the process is going to work and the rules are going to be applied. Finally we have and everything is going to be in a JAR file and uh, will be deployed in the Maven repository and uh, process engine and rules engine can make use of these things. And uh, at last we have the storage. Storage here plays the two kind of role. One uh, is for uh, audit logging, history logging. You can see what happened in the, what happened to all processes that were executed using the system at any point in time and you can create dashboards and entities out of it. The other reason for having the storage is uh, like if there are multiple instances of this BPM running in your servers, multiple instances of servers and if one server goes down at any point in time, whatever process was running on that server needs to be migrated to the other one. So it has got this checkpoint information. So whenever a process stops, so from there we will be able to started from the other instance. So it's not human readable or it's not for the purpose of uh, for us to go and uh, do it. It's for the system to understand from where the process was left open, where to kick started. We are talking of business process. So we'll see what a business process itself is. So basically a process in any general term or the broadest terms, we can say it's a sequence of steps or a series of steps that needs to be performed. In the business context, We'll say there are some uh, business utility behind it or a business reasoning behind it for a sequence of steps uh, that needs to be taken. And it's not always uh, a manual stuff. It can be both manual and uh, some applications combined together to make a process orchestration work. So the most simple definition that I could come up with is, is a series of steps or activities performed by either business users or applications to achieve a business goal to achieve anything, to achieve an object. We'll move on and see what, drill down into what exactly is JVPM. So JVPM stands for this JBoss Business Process Management. It's a uh, lightweight open source process engine. So it's a process engine. It's lightweight. It can be embedded in any application, like any Java application. It can be uh, deployed as a service. It can be a web application can interact with it can be deployed as a service in the ESB itself. There are various integration points that uh, we can do with this JBoss BPM. So it's very, very lightweight and it's open source. We have a whole source code with us and it's only written in Java. So it is extensible as well. And it supports this BPM in 2.0 standard. It's the business process industry-wide standard that is accepted. It's an XML standard and they have very elaborately Defined what are the components that it has, what are the symbols that it has, and all the meaning. So if we create a business process using this BPM in 2.0 standard, it's not only that JVPM is going to understand. All other uh, vendors, whoever is implementing the BPM into standard, 
the process will run even there. JVPM provides a full implementation of this specification. And we have uh, UI tooling available. So what this version of JVPM gives us is that it brings more uh, business users and business analysts closer to the process modeling and stuff. It bridges the gap between the uh, developers and uh, the business analysts. So since the tooling and all is given and it's very easy to understand at any point in time either at the modeling stage or the monitoring stage or when the process is running or whenever all these stages the business analyst could be involved with some training still it's a developer's job to create complex things but it definitely brings business analysts uh, somewhat closer to this uh, whole process and as i said it can run in any java environment uh, it manages the entire life cycle so i've given the process life cycle in the right hand side so here it starts with the we need to discover what we are going to model what is the process that we are going to model we'll do some analysis and come up with what exactly needs to be modeled then we go ahead and model using this uh, tool using this uh, product and then uh, this product enables us to deploy as well so when i say deploy here we deploy everything as a jar file so it's all java component when we deploy and then it has provisions to execute as well once the process is in flow then uh, there are human tasks as well that are involved which can be monitored and which acts as a workflow kind of a stuff we can have uh, can have the task assigned to user groups or a particular user so we can monitor the tasks with whom it is spending and who has to take action and all that and then uh, the actual monitoring itself so this is the overall life cycle of the process and uh, jvpm provides uh, utilities to manage the whole life cycle of this process it integrates well with this rules engine so the inbuilt rules engine is a rules rule engine so since it, both of them use the same knowledge base and it is well integrated into the same system you don't have if there is a rule activity within a process you don't have to send the data to and fro to a rule engine if it's an external system that we are integrating since it's internal it goes with the same working memory and uh, it is able to use the same uh, data that is present in the working memory. So that's one advantage there. And uh, this tool it all supports only standards. So we either BBMN2 or JPA, JTA. So for the persistence in the transactions, it supports JPA and uh, JTA. And um, it has this human task uh, service, full workflow enabled stuff. Whenever a human actor needs to be uh, involved in uh, any particular step in the process, it allows, it has uh, tools for modeling, it has, uh, we can create forms for the user, either external or internal within the tool. And uh, it's fully integrated with Eclipse. Uh, we have plugins for the Eclipse IDE through which we can do all this, we can manage uh, the whole life cycle as well. Let's see the components of uh, JVPM. So this is more detailed diagram. Even this does not cover uh, all the components. I just for simplicity sake, I've left out a few components which are not that important. So basically the knowledge jar is still there in the repository and I've put a runtime environment. So inside the runtime environment, we have this core engine which consists of this process engine and the rules engine. It can also be divided into two. It has got uh, the APIs as well for interacting with the outside applications. Same is with human tasks. So how this works is we have this core engine which is the heart of the uh, JVPM links because it has got both the process engine and the rules engine. Whatever process that is going to be executed, it is going to be executed by this engine and the rules that, are, that need to be processed are going to be processed by this rule engine. So they do core engine interacts with the human task service to get the workflow thing done. So whenever we have some human activity configured within the process flow, then uh, it interacts with this particular component which takes care of uh, routing it, which takes care of getting the messages and uh, doing everything with the workflow stuff. For this human task service, whenever a task is assigned to a particular group or a particular user, that validated or authenticated from the LDAP repository of that enterprise. So we get user data from the LDAP through the user group and then it gets authenticated and they will be able to access their own task. And it has this persistence uh, service and then audit log service for it interacts with these two stuff whenever it's needed and everything has got its storage. Storage is the backend DB which we use to maintain all our data. It can be MySQL, it can be anything. The default thing that it comes up with is an H2 
in memory uh, database, but we will be able to configure uh, any database like Oracle or MySQL. So this is about the core engine. Here I have just put a picture where it shows how Eclipse is integrated here. So whatever is, I'll show you the UI as well, the UI tooling as well. Here it's all uh, from the Eclipse editor. So whatever you are seeing on the screen is the BPMN2 editor where we will be able to drag and drop uh, components and then uh, create a process flow. It has got full provision. It has got all the properties that we can set in the bottom. There is a properties tab there. Uh, we can set for each uh, particular task or activity and for the process itself we will be able to set a lot of properties using this uh, tool and we will be able to create, uh, it has got uh, provisions for creating a, a project directly. Uh, so the wizard gives you a new JPM project or a tools project. Both of that can be done. So whatever we can do with uh, the JVPM console, we can do with the editor as well at the creation stage and the debugging stage. And uh, this is a JVPM console. JVPM console is nothing but it's an out of the box implementation of the core engine and the services that this, the process engine and the rules engine provides. They have just given us a solution which implements all the functionalities of this engine uh, through a web application for us to work. We can create similar sort of applications with the APIs that they have exposed to us. It's all services based, so it is easy to create similar sort of applications even uh, by us. So this is an out of the box application that it comes with. It has got the repository service, so here everything is in the Git repository. All the artifacts are checked into the Git repository and uh, we'll be able to get all the artifacts from the Git repository, do whatever we want to do and then build and deploy them into a Maven repository from where the process engine starts working. So we have got uh, the user interfaces to create the business process as you see in the second screenshot there and we have got a form modeler. So whenever there is a human task or a process at the starting, it requires an input it can be modeled using UI. We can create screens for it. Here itself we have provided a, a data model options, a form model options using which we will be able to create uh, HTML uh, forms uh, which can be integrated with the process for, the, for receiving input from the users. And uh, it also provides a data modeling option wherein uh, the process, they, uh, you can create the data model in two ways. One, uh, there is a UI tooling available uh, wherein you can go and just uh, type in the name and the type of the attributes and then you can create the data model or you can create uh, in the editor a normal Java POJO and then we can deploy it as a Java. So both ways it is available, either write code or we can model the data using the UI. And it provides provisions for building it, deploying it, executing it and uh, monitoring it. So it covers the whole uh, life cycle.